Well, hi there. I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. Hey, in this short video, what I want to do is talk about building job satisfaction in your employees. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the um, five of the ideas from, uh, from Joe Shampo here in his book, Organizational Behavior. And uh, there's actually more than five in the literature, but these are the ones, these are probably the five biggest ones. So uh, if you want to contribute to your employees uh, feeling a sense of job satisfaction and hint, you do want to do that. That will increase, uh, very much increase the chance of them staying at your job. It'll reduce turnover uh, and it's just simply the right thing to do. At any rate, uh, so there, there's five things. The first one is skill variety. See, a classic mistake engineering managers make is they say, oh, well, uh, this task, um, you know, a stress test or something or other. Oh, Bob always does that. And you fall into this mind frame of saying, oh, that's what Bob does. Oh, that's what Bob does. And if you want to build job satisfaction, what you, what you want to realize is tasks like that, particularly tasks that are kind of very specialized and, and maybe at some level uh, rote, you, you don't always want to assign those to the same person. The first two or three times they do it, it's fine. And after a while, uh, it really works against job satisfaction. We are humans. We like variety. If you're unclear on this, go to the grocery store and look at all the choices we have for breakfast cereal. Especially Americans like variety. And if you're still not convinced, go look in the grocery store in the freezer section and look how many varieties of vanilla ice cream there is. It's insane. But Americans especially like variety. And if you want to increase job satisfaction, think in terms of don't always give the same person the task to do. And by the way, that's also really good for other reasons. Like, for instance, let's suppose you always have Bob do it and then Bob retires and then you're out of luck. I mean, you're much better off for a whole bunch of reasons, you know, mixing it up, maybe asking Bob to train somebody else or, or something like that. But the first one is job variety. Now, the second one is task identity. Now, what that has to do with is the degree to which they're able to identify, identify themselves with the whole product. So let me give you a, an example that's very near and dear to me right now. So about a week ago, Tandem really got approval from FDA uh, for our control IQ algorithm, which is a hybrid closed loop system. And the, the data is overwhelming. The anecdotal evidence is overwhelming. It is a great algorithm, and it's changing everything. And one of the really things that I really like is I was involved from the first moment Right up until right up until approval, uh, I was the technical lead on the project, and I did the initial system design and and kind of involved in, in just a whole lot of things. And there's tremendous sense of I have tremendous sense of uh, task identity because I was involved in the whole project. And what you'll find is, uh, if you give employees the chance to follow a project from soup to nuts, that actually is much better than saying, oh well. I just want you to write the, the requirements document for each project and, and you start coming up with this sort of divide and conquer, kind of like an assembly line where you say, well, you know, your job is putting on the hubcaps. That makes for great uh, manufacturing theory, but that's not the way humans work. It's not the way engineers work. If you want to create job satisfaction, you want to have them be involved in the whole thing from start to finish. Uh, the next thing is task significance. And so the idea here is it's very important to help each employee understand why what we're doing is important. Spend time telling stories. Spend time um, just making sure they understand the significance. Now, I work in medical, you know, the medical device industry, and so that one's kind of low-hanging fruit. I mean, if, if you can't create a sense of significance among your employees and you work in the medical device industry, I mean, that's just unbelievable. You know, it's like, wow, we get to help people with a horrible disease. I mean, that, how meaningful is that? That's the coolest thing ever. Uh, I know a guy who, who works at Blizzard Software, you know, and he's very happy with the fact that, you know, he, he works there. But, but, you know, at the end of the day, that, that's an organization where I think you're really going to have trouble 
um, creating a sense of significance. You know, you may have a sense of success, but in terms of, you know, really, are you, um, you know, making the world a better place? Not so sure. At any rate, but, but that's important for you as an engineering manager to focus on creating a sense of task significance. Now, the fourth one is autonomy. Get, create a sense of autonomy. And what that means is you've got to let your people make decisions. Now, they don't have to make all the decisions, but what you don't want to do is make all the decisions. And I'll give you a clear example. Uh, yesterday, I was talking with one of the principal engineers, and uh, we were talking about a new feature. And I kind of had a picture in my mind of how I would do it. And I, uh, it was kind of a uh, sort of a monitor that, that timed a couple different things. And I had a scheme worked out in my head where you could have one timer and kind of reset it under a number of conditions. And this engineer just thought, well, let's have three separate timers and sort of combine them at the end. And, you know, there was a lot of things in me that wanted to say, no, no, listen, it'll be more efficient, it'll write it. But here's the truth of the matter. Uh, you know, the way he's doing it will probably end up being better. It isn't what I had in mind but I'm giving him the freedom. And the main reason I did that is I know this builds a sense of job satisfaction where he gets a sense of, you know, hey, I came up with this scheme and he's got his reasons. And it's very, very important for creative people, for knowledge workers to be able to make those decisions. And the, really what you don't want to do as a manager is override those decisions unless you're sure it will be a disaster. I mean, if it's something like... Uh, you know, I want to make an airplane, but I don't want to have any wings. Okay, that's a really big one that you want to override. But in terms of, you know, this way and that way, there's, you know, with every every problem, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And what to build job satisfaction, you want the people doing the work to make those decisions. You want to create as many cases that. And that's one of the reasons Scrum is a very good management technique. sort of gives that autonomy to the team. And the final one is feedback from the job. And what we don't mean here is like, uh, you know, the annual review from the supervisor. Not talking about that all. The truth of the matter is that that usually is not correlated to job satisfaction at all. What it is, is feedback from the customers. And so, uh, for instance, example, I mentioned the control IQ algorithm. And right now we're just getting flooded with anecdotal evidence where people are, you know, just saying things like, you know, it's just all these these comments like, you know, it's like I don't even have diabetes anymore. I mean, you talk to somebody, people come up to us and they hug us when they like, we'll be wearing our tandem shirts and they'll hug us. And, and all these stories about how great the system is. And that's what we're talking about is getting feedback. We worked on this thing for several years and now we're getting customer feedback. And so what you want to think in terms of your engineers is somehow connect that to them. So, you know, if you can get them to trade shows where they might interact with users or, uh, you know, if there's a marketing person who can, who, who's in contact with users, if they can summarize some of the stories from the field or things like this. But, but it's very, very important that the engineers hear from the users uh, just their appreciation and their love of the product and what, what they appreciate about it. At any rate, so that's five things, uh, skill variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, and feedback. And if you want to build um, uh, job satisfaction in your employees, those, those are the five things you really uh, want to look at. At any rate, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich. I'm the engineering leadership guy. Uh, I've got a lot of videos on my website. That's TomUlrichConsulting.com. And also on YouTube, I think if you just search for Dr. Tom Ulrich, that seems to work too. But at any rate, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you later.